Um, Representative Reynolds, we've been chatting about what we would be working on. And, uh, we've been chatting about what we'd be working on if GRID was on the special session. I know you've been working on some energy efficiency pieces that we've been um, touching on, but could you tell us a little bit about your hopes? Absolutely. Uh, I am so proud uh, of you, uh, Representative Zwiener, and all of our uh, members who have been working diligently for real solutions to the many problems that we faced as a state. Uh, um, unfortunate, uh, the leadership has blocked us in our efforts to pass good public policy to protect Texans. They, in fact, have put uh, the profits of special interest groups and oil and gas over the protection of and well-being of our citizens in Texas. And so to that end, uh, there were some great pieces of legislation that uh, many of our members worked on. And many of those bills did not even get hearings. Uh, they didn't even get vetted in a hearing. So much less not getting on the floor, they couldn't even get hearings. And I'm going to talk about just a few of those briefly. But one of the things I want to make clear is that in a, a session where we were looking at everything, and I said on energy resources and environmental regulation, and we had hearings, we had emergency hearings that we heard from all stakeholders. And one of the things that I asked was, do you believe, this is to the subject matter experts, do you believe that climate change has had an impact upon the frequency of these 100 year events that we're having? And should we be considering climate change in the Texas state of Texas? And those subject matter experts said, yes. And guess what? We filed legislation. I know you had uh, legislation, um, Representative Zwiener. I had legislation and we asked the chairman, we begged the chairman, literally begged the chairman uh, of the Environmental Regulation Committee for a hearing. I've sat on that, com on that committee now for, this is my sixth term, for six consecutive terms. And we've asked for our file legislation along with Representative Chairman Anchia. And to this day, we cannot even get a hearing to discuss climate change, not after Hurricane Harvey, not after Winter Storm Uri, not after we did a complete autopsy and determined, as, as President Biden has stated, that that was one of his top priorities. And in his first few weeks in his executive order, he put that on his agenda. So th that, that was one of the biggest things that didn't happen that I think is a missed opportunity. And we have to stop being climate deniers. We have to start looking at science and start getting real about what has taken place in Texas and across this country. So that was one of the things that I wanted to state. I filed uh, legislation uh, that would have uh, gave PUC authority to ensure uh, ERCOT has adequate power reserve. That was uh, House Bill 2480. Uh, it was referred, as many bills were, to state affairs, and it would not get a hearing. Uh, that was unfortunate. Uh, House Bill 2686, that would have talked about ERCOT's interconnectivity uh, to facilities outside of ERCOT. And one of the things that may have already been discussed was that Texas is afraid of federal oversight. And that is the reason why they stand alone. But they have shown that they were not able to be uh, fiduciaries of the, of the citizens of the state. And we need federal oversight. And that is unfortunate. Uh, I also found in a great missed opportunity was House Bill 3362, that Senator Menendez also filed a similar bill in the Senate entitling energy customers to participate in a demand response programs. Uh, that is powerful. That again, as the recurrent theme, was referred to state affairs only to die and never to even get a hearing. And so I can talk about energy efficiency uh, legislation uh, that did get a hearing, uh, but and I even had the votes uh, and, and the chairman would not let the bill get out of the committee. So what, what I want to say is this, is that we have to continue to educate the public about why you should be concerned. This is about our future and our children's future. The sake of our state in terms of air quality is at stake. And, we, and we're going to continue to see other extreme weather events because of climate change and the impact of global warming. And we are unprepared. The state of Texas is unprepared. We're to, we, we don't have a re reliable grid. And we're still beholden to industry. Industry is writing the laws. And I hate to say that because I want to believe that people, would, that, that our elected officials would put people over politics and special interests. But quite frankly, it is unfortunate that they're putting profits. And I wouldn't, and, I, and it, it just breaks my heart when we had approximately 700 Texans to die, the most costliest disaster in our state's history. And here we are still in a special session 
where he did not, the governor did not put that on the call. So thank you, uh, Representative Zwiener and all of my colleagues who have worked diligently. Uh, we've been working together very strong, collaboratively. Uh, Representative Rosenthal, all of us have to come up with solutions. And I know we're going to continue to work with all the stakeholders uh, and encourage leadership to, to get these bills uh, on the call in, in the future on the regular session. So uh, that is those were some of the bills. There were other bills. I could go on and on, but you know that you get the gist of it. Those bills did not get hearings. Uh, they did not get to the floor. And obviously, they were not passed into law to protect the well-being of, of, of our Texans to make sure that in the winter that they stay warm and in the summer they stay cool. Thank you very much, Representative Zwiener. Thank you. Can I interrupt?